All right, the day has finally arrived. We have the Northern Traveler set in Assassin's Creed Odyssey with Dane Axe. What I'm going to show today is a build I put together based on this set that I think feels very Viking and also leans really heavily into the set bonus. So my goal with this set is to essentially create a loop that lets us get back to uh, Ares Madness as quickly and smoothly as possible. My defense in this set is going to be to always be in an animation. Is to never be uh, just walking around um, not attacking something with a skill if I need to be in an open fight. I'm not sure... So for this, just head to your Ubisoft Club Rewards. There's going to be a button here that says Claim. Press Claim. Done. Sets added to your, uh, your inventory. Uh, for me, the toasts came up twice, and they didn't get added to my inventory until the second time. I don't know why that is. Um, but I guess watch out for that. If that happens to you, you'll know what to look for. Be patient. So this is going to be a sort of variation on a build I had done before um, that I didn't do a video on, but the build that I had done before was based on reducing the cost of overpower abilities, reducing cooldowns with warrior ability kills, and just dealing damage. And the idea behind that build was to use the overpowered ability of a heavy bladed or a heavy blunt weapon. Uh, to chain to multiple enemies and then with each kill that 10% cooldown reduction would trigger um, so that by the time I came out of a overpower attack with a heavy bladed or heavy blunt weapon uh, my fury of the bloodline cooldown would be back up. Uh, it didn't quite um, smoothly go just one to the other back and forth so I usually had to weave in something else uh, so I had the adrenaline cost reduction for overpower abilities on that um, so that I would have the adrenaline to sustain another ability. Um, but now we have fixed that problem by adding in something that costs no adrenaline and actually regenerates a little bit of adrenaline from the damage that you're dealing and the kills that you get. Um, and on top of that, it's going to reduce, it's going to have its cooldown reduced even faster uh, because we only need two kills, two kills on anything with anything an ability not an ability a bow an axe an assassination any kill any kill will reduce the cooldown of battle cry of Ares by 50 percent so we need two kills that's it uh, we can go right back into it that's great that's awesome that's really powerful uh, now on top of that as a legendary set this is unique because it has uh, two base stats uh, some of these are not rolled ideally um, I would much rather have, uh, you know, crit chance here. I would much rather have uh, crit damage while full health here. I would much rather have crit chance while full health here than either of those. Uh, the boots are probably the most egregious one. Uh, this piece, though, is actually really nice just in general. Like, even in an epic build that uses heavy bladed weapons, I would want to add damage with heavy blunt, or I'm sorry, damage with heavy weapons to this, and then it would be best in slot. It would be just a little bit better than a perfectly rolled epic. Uh, it would have all three stats, and then the top level damage thing is just going to be one point higher, just that tiny bit better. Um, so that would be really cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and equip all of our gear. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch this to the Dane Axe. And because we have Battle Cry of Ares, um, as that third skill to weave in. We're only going to use those three skills. We're going to use Battle Cry, or I'm sorry, not Battle Cry, the enhanced version, which is called Ares Madness. We're going to use Ares Madness. We're going to use Overpower Attacks with our heavy bladed weapon, and we're going to use Fury of the Bloodline. So unfortunately, this is a build that does require uh, both DLCs. Uh, it does require that Fury of the Bloodline. You could do something similar without Fury of the Bloodline, but you would just need to come up with you know, some other adrenaline regenerating uh, method. 
Uh, one thing you could do is you could put the you could make the second axe in this build, that axe that I had on before that reduces the adrenaline cost. Um, and then just weave in some regular attacks. Um, but ultimately this is going to work a lot better with Fury of the Bloodline. Uh, and I am going to want, I think, 100% damage more than I'm going to want. I think I'm going to want to use this one. The armor penetration would be nice. Uh, but I think this is going to be better, the 50 or the 100% damage, but health cap to 25%, because I care about my warrior damage, but I also care about my assassin damage a lot. I want that Ares Madness to deal as much damage as possible, um, because that's the whole point of the set, is to have Ares Madness deal a ton of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and make Ares Madness deal even more damage uh, by engraving this one with the 50% warrior damage conversion to all damage, and that's going to boost my assassin damage up quite a bit. Um, if I wanted to make this a more warrior focused build, uh, I could replace that 50% warrior damage with 30% armor penetration, and that would be better for warrior. Um, this bow, I think as a total min max, would be better as the bandit bow. Um, I think that 50% crit damage would ultimately be better damage for everything. Uh, I haven't actually run the numbers on that, so I'm not positive, but if you do have the Bandit Bow, you might want to put that on instead. Uh, and then you want to also have that reduced cooldown on Warrior Ability Kill. Uh, let's go ahead and get this armor set engraved up with all of the best possible engravings for damage dealing on each slot. On our helm, we already have 50% crit damage, so our best option is going to be 20% crit chance while full health. Almost did low health there. Our best one on the arms. 10% uh, crit chance is going to be more consistent, it's going to be less variance, but the 100% crit damage while full health is going to be a lot higher average damage dealt. So I'm just going to go with a higher average damage, uh, because that higher average damage feels more Viking, you know? It feels like something a Viking would do, is go for the higher average damage. Um, I have a lot of options on the torso. Uh, I could engrave warrior damage, I could engrave... Uh, assassin damage. Uh, I could engrave any of these legendary effects to get some other kind of utility out of this slot. I'm just going to go with damage with heavy weapons uh, to boost my Fury of the Bloodline and my Overpower damage. On the Waste, best one here. That's an easy choice. 100% crit damage while full health. And on the Boots. Now here, because the choice is between crit chance while full health and crit damage while full health, I'm going to go with the crit chance while full health, because I think that's going to give me better average damage. Like the expected value from a given hit is going to be higher this way. Now something you might have noticed while I've been doing this is that the engraving takes up the item card space that the set bonus would normally take off. And you might be worried about that. You might think... Uh, oh no, did I just like overwrite the set bonus with um, some regular old uh, stat bonuses? What's the point of using a legendary set if I don't get a set bonus? Um, but nothing to worry about. Uh, the set bonus is still there. Minus 50% cooldown duration for Battle Cry of Ares ability on kill. Uh, nothing to worry about. Totally fine. And let's go give this a test drive. There's a Mercenary right here. I'm just going to. Go ahead and one-shot him real quick. Five million damage from the front. Easy one-shot with Ares Madness. No problem. And I'm going to try and show off what the loop is going to look like against a couple of enemies. Okay. Let's try and get more than one enemy in a group so we can get multiple procs of the cooldown. All right, so now we're just going to go into our overpower, and you see how that guy didn't actually deal any damage and was knocked back? Uh, that's because during these animations, you're invulnerable. Uh, so against groups, you just tap one of your three skills. You tap Fury, you tap Ares, uh, you tap overpower, and you don't have to worry about damage reduction or defense or dodging or anything. So we got Fury, and you notice our Ares Madness is already back up. Where'd he go? There he is. And it doesn't matter because we can't be killed while we're in this mode. Alright, cool. Um, why don't we head over to the arena 
We'll check this out against a larger number of enemies at once. You'll see how much more fluid it gets once you have more than two or three targets. Um, those groups of four, five, groups of ten, groups of twenty, uh, whole forts, um, those are going to go even smoother than those small groups go. Give me the king of the arena. Get right in here and show off the power. The power of the Northern Traveler set. Uh, so one thing I want to change real quick. Um, since we don't have anything except fire damage on gear, um, and even that we're only getting from the bow, uh, this works a little bit better as a fire build. Uh, but that doesn't matter that much. All right, just quickly wax a bunch of guys. Now it's best if you don't get hit by stuff while you're inside this madness, um, but it doesn't really matter because um, because you're not killable inside madness. So now that there's a group available, I'm just gonna go into overpower as soon as they're all in melee range. We're gonna overpower attack a bunch of guys, and you notice our Ares madness is already off cooldown. And then as soon as we get out of that animation, we're going to go right into Fury of the Bloodline. And then as soon as we get out of that animation, we're going to go right back into Ares Madness, back at full adrenaline. All right. Now we're just going to go back into our overpower, and you notice those cooldowns coming up. Each time we kill somebody with our overpower ability, our cooldowns come up a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, Ares Madness doesn't count as a warrior ability kill for that extra bonus. But that's fine, because we don't need Fury of the Bloodline absolutely every time we cast Ares Madness, because Ares Madness doesn't cost adrenaline. Quick one shot. Easy peasy. Alright, that's the build. I'm just going to show you the gear one more time. Real slow. Just as soon as we get out of this loading screen. Dane Axe. Convert warrior percent damage to all damage. Standard heavy bladed weapon. Warrior crit damage, damage with heavy bladed weapons. Warrior crit chance, reduce all cooldowns by 10% on warrior ability kill. That's going to make our overpower ability with heavy bladed weapon reduce the cooldown on our Fury of the Bloodline. And our overpower ability is also going to reduce the cooldown on our Ares Madness because of the set bonus on the Northern Traveler. On the helm, you want crit chance while full health. On the arms, you want crit damage while full health. Torso, damage with heavy weapons. Waist, crit damage while full health. And legs, crit chance while full health. Now something uh, to notice about this when you are leveling up is that because you can engrave the crit chance while full health, you can get really high crit chance in this set, even at relatively low levels like 50. Um, the 10% crit chance here um, is going to be lower at 50, but you could also engrave 10% crit chance here uh, to try and pull that up as soon as you get to level 50, which makes this a pretty decent set starting at 50, maybe even lower. Um, more or less as soon as you have Ares Madness unlocked. Uh, now without Ares Madness unlocked, with Battle Cry of Ares unlocked, I don't know how good this is. Um, without Ares Madness unlocked as a Battle Cry of Ares set, you could maybe make this work as a uh, while low health set. Uh, I don't know if I would set it up that way, because I just really don't like playing while low health, um, but eh, there's a possibility. Um, but that's the whole setup. That's the uh, build. That's the loop. The loop is Madness, Overpower, Fury, Madness, Overpower, Fury, Madness, Overpower, Fury. And it feels kind of Viking. You're just constantly in animations doing really flashy attacks, really swinging those axes around. 
Um, you're invulnerable almost the whole time because you're either in Ares Madness where you can't be killed or you're in Overpower or Fury animations where you can't take damage. Um, works great. Uh, good luck and have fun.